Welcome to the Effective Educator. Uh, for today's video, we're going to be doing something slightly different. This is unscripted because this is going to be a tour of Logsy, which is the tool I'll be showing you next week when I demonstrate what my organizational structure and planning structure looks like going from the month up to the year. So this is going to be a little bit more freeform, a little bit more free going, and you'll be able to see uh, the basics of what you need in order to get all the benefits out of LogSeq without having a lot of the heavier weight to like setting it up. So this is the least possible setup you can do and still get the benefits of LogSeq. Uh, you can find the link to install LogSeq below and this will be a lot easier if I just go ahead and show it to you. So let's get started. So LogSeq is a way for us to organize our notes. What really LogSeq is, is it is sequential logging. So it's a log sequence, that's the idea of where this comes from. And log seek is a way for us to organize our notes sequentially. This is what you're gonna see when you open up log seek. If you look here, it says this is a demo graph. Changes here are not gonna be saved until you open a lo uh, logo folder, but you can see the gist of what it is. Here's the tips. Click to edit any block, type enter to create a new block, shift enter to create a new line, and slash to show all the commands. This is everything you need to know in order to use log seek. Now let's go ahead and open up a new graph so that you can see this and get started. And I'll show you the three things you need to remember as you're using LogSeq in order to get about probably only 30% of the benefit. But if you've been taking your notes in something like a Google Doc or in Keep or in uh, Sticky Notes, you're gonna see a 10X improvement on being able to find your notes by doing this. So I'm gonna click add a graph up here. That's gonna take me to this page here so that I can uh, set up my notes. So I'm going to create a new folder here just to set this up. I'm just going to open up into this, which is going to default to your Documents tab. If you're using a Mac, you may need to actually tell it. I want to be on the Documents tab uh, or wherever you want it to be in your Documents folder. So you hit New Folder right here to create your graph. You can give this graph a name. We'll just call this LogC for the sake of simplicity. And a graph in LogSeq is a folder because a graph is a collection of files. So we're, when we're creating our LogSeq graph, we're going to create it by creating a folder. So you hit new folder, select the folder you want to create, and hit open, and now we're into LogSeq. And we're looking now at our graph. Now this is pretty empty, but we can start to fill it in by just taking notes right here. Um, We can say enter your notes on the screen right here and you can type in your notes. If I hit enter, it moves to the next line. So hitting enter will move me on to the next line. And shift enter starts a new line inside the current block. The key concept for LogSeq is blocks and a block is one of those bullet points. You can see the bullet points off here to the side. Here's a bullet point, here's a bullet point, here's a bullet point. The first key to understanding and getting the benefit out of LogSeq is everything goes in the journal. We're looking at the journal right here. This is the journal. Your journal is a daily note that's created for you every single day. By default, it has nothing in it. So you can just plug in everything that goes here automatically right into the journal and it'll plug it in and everything works for you. So I have here, I'm entering my notes. Maybe I had a meeting today. So I might say, uh, I might say ESL training. I had training on how to do ESL. I hit tab and now I'm taking notes under that block. So this note is part of that. Uh, let's say we focused on allowing, let's word it this way. Let me say allow extra time for think pair share activities so that ESL students can formulate responses. This is the strategy that we talked about in this particular training. It's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, and I might even add a note here, uh, make sure to double times in my class, my APCS principles class, I need to double the amount of time I'm allowing for think pair shares. Now you notice here that I put these brackets around think pair share and around APCS principles. This is the next tip. If you type in two brackets like that, you're creating a page. 
This is different from your journal. These pages exist as a way for you to be able to reach out and connect different things. So the second tip for this is make pages for everything that you want to find later. This is where the benefit of using Logseed comes in. You may have seen this if you've seen my student tracking video, which you can find here in the, in the description and also up on the screen right now. Um, but when you create these pages, what you're creating is nodes where things can link together. So maybe after my ESL training, I came out and my next thing I had was I had my APCS principles class, right? So I have APCS, I'm gonna tag this so that I know what it is. In fact, I should probably go ahead and tag ESL training so that I can find that later, probably just like this, ESL training. You can also use hashtags. Hashtags work exactly the same as the double brackets. The only difference is they look different and a hashtag can't have any spaces in it. So I have these here I'm in APCS principles. And let's say I'm gonna have try the think pair share activity. So it worked much better, but I could allow maybe 2.5x time to, to let some of my choir students speak. And then I'm also going to note that, and I've hit tab here, now I can indent this as much as I want. I can add as many layers under this as I want. Um, provide an extension for students who don't need So this is the second tip, is you want to make sure that everything, you're making pages for everything. So step one is everything goes in the journal. This just becomes a daily running log of everything that you're doing. And tomorrow, you're going to put in the same notes. You don't have to put in everything. When I say everything goes in the journal, what I mean is everything in log seat goes in the journal. So if you decide that you don't need to be keeping track of your, um, your student conferences in log seat, then they don't go in the journal. Right? But everything that's going into LogSeq starts in the journal. It goes into the journal first. So I said we're creating pages for everything, and these are our actually pages. If I click on pages here, it takes me to the pages page. Just like I've left my journal page, now I'm on the pages page, and this is the final note. Use pages to find the things you want to find later. Pages is a bad example because there's only one link to it. But if I jump to, for example, think pair share i can see here i learned about it in esl training and then i used it in cs principles and i can see a note here that i need this extension now eventually i may settle on exactly how much additional time i want to allow in order to accommodate for esl students in my think pair share activities and on that case i might settle finally at uh, 2.5x time from planned lesson activities, right? So if I'm looking in a place like code.org or someplace like that, and they have a think pair share, and they say, give your kids 60 seconds to do the think pair share, I'm going to do time and a half, I'm going to give them 150 seconds, right? As an example, if this was something that I'm using. So this is just a way that I can plug this in. Now I have this note here, this page here is for canonical thoughts only. In other words, these are your permanent recollections and ideas about this topic. That's what pages are for. Not the references. The linked references, that's so that I can find this later. I can go back and I can see I did a think pair share activity here. I did it in this class. I did it in this class. I can see all of these things and I can see the trainings that I've done on think pair share and I can link all of this together. I can click down here and take a look at CS principles and I can see here, oh, here's my notes on CS principles. This graph is empty because it's brand new. But if we look at my existing graph, you'll see that a lot of my pages have lots of links. And we'll see that next week as we're looking at this. So this is the basics of what you need to do in order to get started with LogSeq. You need to enter your notes into the journal, make pages for everything you want to find later, and then finally, reference your pages when you want to find something later. That's it. 
there are lots of different things you can lay on top of this, but this gets you started. And the best part of this is if you start this way and you start to lay those additional things on top, it doesn't take any additional work on your part to restructure your old notes. Join me next week when we actually take a look at how I use LogSeek to plan my month and my week, and, or my month and my year and my semester, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Thank you very much. Have a great day.